You got that right, Liberus. I'm sane. A token is only as good as a substance behind it. I'll be talking about the Nigerian child and the tokenism of governance. Nigeria will be 60 years old in October. It has no enduring benefits for her children. The childhoods of many of them have been taken from them by poverty and the thoughtlessness of their governments. Child benefit is a universal payment. Now let's look at three countries with a grip on their children from birth. In Ireland, the destination of many Nigerians in the past, child benefit is 140 pounds per month for each child. The first payment is at the start of the month, following the birth of the child, until the month the child turns 18. Presently, the government is working at allowing children born in Ireland to foreign parents to be eligible for citizenship if they've been resident there for three years. In Canada, the destination of Nigerians nowadays, about nine out of 10 Canadian families receive higher payments under the Canada Child Benefits, CCB, than before. The CCB has a, had a positive impact on families' incomes, playing a key role in reducing child poverty. There were 334,000 fewer children living in poverty in 2018. Let's go to Finland. Preschool and daycare are basically free. I know I said three, but this fourth one is important. Let's go to South Africa where the Child Support Grant was introduced in 1998. In the last 14 years, the Social Grants Program has evolved into one of the most comprehensive social protection systems in the developing world. And now, Nigeria. The Nigerian child gets no benefit from being born in Nigeria. The child born in Nigeria's oil-rich region gets nothing, zilch, nothing from the government, nor from the elders of the land who misappropriate the wealth. Free education instituted by Nigeria's founding fathers in the past is no longer free in many states. And instead of a purposeful, meaningful, futuristic benefit for the Nigerian child, typically of Nigeria and its many dramas, Nigerian leaders engage in tokenism in celebrating the Nigerian child. They fall over themselves to be benevolent to children spotlighted on social media. A proper talent identification scheme to harness the gifts and talents of our child stars will be more pragmatic. But what do we have? Strange ad hoc scholarships here and there, the singing hawker boy adopted by the Imo state governor, a visit by the Delta state government to the girl who defied the incessant beating of our teacher in school, and the latest is, mommy, calm down. A state government actually used that as a peg for its Salah message. I mean, in another climb, his mom will be the guest of welfare by now. The Nigerian child benefits nothing from both the federal and state governments of Nigeria at birth. The imported school feeding program has become a stillborn for the government of the day. Its implementation and success has remained a mirage. I've got myself thinking aloud about the cost implication for the Nigerian government. What does it really cost to follow through on this comprehensive feeding for our children? Why is it so difficult to create simple indigenous foods, meals, that the children can write about as the memories of the Nigeria of their time? The value chain will include farms and farmers, vendors, a well-run kitchen that the children can also visit on excursion to see how the meals are cooked, There'll be food for the children, and there'll be employment for the adults. It will be a win-win. But alas, what do we have? Nigerians are quick to defend the Nigerian government with the rhetoric of it being broke. We're broke. Nigeria is broke. Nigeria is broke. Yet we hear of humongous embezzled money almost every week. As Nigeria clocks 60 in October, are we, as citizens, going to start engaging our legislators more, more purposefully, for our basic needs, or the majority of us will continue to be tranquilized by soft porn on cable TV to drown our disappointments. Call it by his name, Big Brother, Big Brother Nigeria. Oh my goodness. Can I say that? Um, <laughs> very passionate. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, thank you for the passion, the very mm. passionate advocacy. Um, I don't think that, I mean, and the evidence bears me out. Okay. I don't think that the Nigerian government whether today's government or the previous government, um, has ever really cared about a Nigerian 
the Nigerian citizen. Not the daughter of the child. You know, the, the Nigerian. Um, I don't think that is the case. They, they make the right noises, you know, about what it is, but about what the responsibilities are, but they don't do the things that are necessary. And I can tell you this because the evidence is clear. You pointed out to some of it. There's no data to even talk about where, how Thank many you. kids are being born, where, at what age. There's no vision that should drive the collection of that data and what should be done with that data. So when you, when you talk about it from a point of, and we see it, we're talking about COVID now. Like, I know you did a wonderful advocacy about um, caring for, for, for children, especially who have um, special needs. Have you heard any government official talk about this, this thing, even within the season. Have no, you heard you even with... You see even, one on the street selling granola yes, and then even, somebody video... Yeah, even within this, this same COVID season. Okay. Have you heard anyone talk about... We talked about it on, on this show. I remember I was, I was on this show. We talked about education, how the online learning, whether there's been any proper idea, vision, planning about what needs to be done to drive this. No. So I, mean, I, I don't think... I don't I think, think, was, I don't think we care for our children. Yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, that's the message that comes across, but not because I suspect none of them care. I feel the system is such that even the few that care, it, st it, st it strangulates them, you know, because you do get little ideas that some people want to make a difference. I don't want to name names, but you, you, the general impression you yeah. get is that, I'm coming, let me, let me just say it for the record. Ow. General impression you get, no, because I try and put myself in their shoes. Even with all the will in the world, if I got into the system as it is today, I will struggle to make an impact. I use my work environment as an example. There are certain things I know I would like How many to be done, I but I already accept. I already. I call the Kenyan times. Let me finish. Times. But let me just make this statement that I already know from the get go because of the culture that surrounds us as people. I, I better just save my breath if I kill myself and say, let me stop here. You know, fight my choose my fight. But let me just make the point. I was going to say. What I admire about you, Treasurer, even with your advocacy, is that I see you behind the scenes, and I know that you're able to, when you talk of legislature engagement, you've done it. So one, one of my dreams when I finally got my head around, okay, this, this society is too dysfunctional for words, is I wanted to, I registered an NGO where I felt, get the citizens' engagement, prepare the groundwork, just make it easy for people to just join it, sign a petition, go and do all the collating, like you're doing with the sanitary pads thing, and then just get people, so I would love it, like this children's thing, child benefit, because I know, I know people who are recipients of the very same. It's, it's, as a, it's an investment, the Kenan, the but the Kenan, mindset isn't there. Government people, um, do you feel out of place that Yaradua, as president, his first grandchild was born in America? If um, that's not surprising, um, Seriaki Dixon as governor, the wife gave birth in America. Mm -hmm. I can name, I can, I can call many. So they get to these places, receive these benefits, you know. And they enjoy They it. are attended to fantastic healthcare system and then they come here. They can't replicate them, but yet they boast about, you know, shanties that they have built that they call the World Health Center. I talked about how Akbabio built a world-class hospital that couldn't treat him when he had minor bruises in a car accident in Abuja. They flew him to London. And, and so, you talked about few people who care to do it. There was no care. You, you talk about treasure. If treasure becomes first lady, you already know what she would do because she's been doing it. Mm. And that's why the program will not die with her when she leaves office. But she'll be surrounded name, by people who may not name one, make it easy for her. No, but if it's a, a, an idea that she has bettered even before she got to that limelight, she's passionate about, she can only share that passion. You can't, we say, Nemo that quad non habit. You can't give what, what you, you don't have. have. And so you find out that most of these people, of these people, they get into office, it's, please come and advise me, what can I do now? You know, as the first lady. Or they say, oh, take on autistic children. Oh, yes, this is a new program, the pet program of the first lady. You hear them jump around, collect money from people, use a few children to showcase the program. Once they leave office, because the passion was never there, you know, the program just died down. And that's why there's no continuation, there's no care. So the question the is, why are they place. even there in the first place? The system, it is to show off. It's it, not the no, system. Why are we electing first ladies that don't have it a is drive? It is you don't not, elect first ladies. Well, I mean, sorry, why are we even electing... Uh, people, people whose wives so are, that generally don't have any inspiration. That's why from day one, even the people, when they say, 
likes attracts. Mm -hmm. You don't have inspiration. You marry somebody that would also not have inspiration. Guys, so, producer so, is telling us around. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Sorry, but, but let David but, just but have a quick word. David, you can just... My, yeah. my, like, the only thing I would add to the conversation is that, well, I'm not so sure that Nigeria has necessarily has the capacity to institute like a comprehensive child benefit program. It would be ideal for it even to do that. Even feeding program. I'm not sure Nigeria has that capacity. And even if it did, the reality of the Nigerian government is that that money is just going to go missing. So from my, from my perspective, oh. what I think the Nigerian government should do and that it can do is focus its efforts into investing in education. That is the key thing. It's education that will change the story of the Nigerian child. Where is they're not doing It doesn't that. matter how much Even feeding... the education... Where is they're not doing that? I remember Emeka's yeah. um, advocacy the other day. It's still the same colonial thing. Infuse... Um, anyway. Beautiful head, though, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. We'll <laughs> top. Okay. Taking stock of how effective we are is good for government as well as for us. We love that you help us do just that. On Hush Youths and Hush Leadership, T-Boy Kalechi is a fan of Libras and says, I like this first man. He always points out the facts and the truth. Whereas Silv V, a man of few words, simply says, great job. On the Theater of Absurdity, God on Kingdom, Kingsman simply says, great one. You know what they say? A word is enough for the wise. Thank you for your feedback, T-Boy Kalechi, Silv V, and God's own Kingsman. On to woke for our own good, Black Sun Horizons, 44 Black Horus has done a lot of uh, reflecting and has this to say. If you have the commanding, do it my way or no way, I know what's best attitude, not only with children, but with practically anyone. It simply will not work in the West. And really, why should it? I understand both perspectives on how to relate with children, but the key difference is that in methods that are less aggressive and forceful, and we find that they actually work and often far better than imagined. Everyone has their own particular world or way of perceiving and acting. There are individuals with their own minds and even legitimate self-interest. Often, the best, most powerful way to persuade, in my opinion, is to find out what the other party's interests are and then zero in while simultaneously linking your lesson or message. Thank you, Black Sun, for that thought-out feedback. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. I don't know about tranquilizers and soft porn. I'll be talking on sober issues of state after the break.